On Halloween weekend of my second year of college, I asked my friends if they were going out to any costume parties. They said no, they were staying in to read, watch shows, play video games. We were all huge nerds. I said okay, cool. Went to my bedroom, shut the door, cranked up music, buried my head in a pillow, and screamed. And cried. Torn up. Do you want to see my Twilight review? Sure. Yeah. yeah. For me, Halloween wasn't an excuse to put on a costume. It was an excuse to take off the costume I wore every other day of the year. I know I've been off YouTube for over three years. Some of you are wondering, what's going on? Am I done making videos? And why do I look slightly different? But I killed it right now, mother I'm the best rapper who looks just like Butters from South Park. Yeah, you heard me. What did I stutter? From my earliest memories, I knew I was female inside and my body didn't match. When I saw other women, I burned with envy. I drew pictures of myself as a woman. I imagined it. I even prayed to God at night to make my body female when I woke up. Didn't work. Should have tried Satan. Of course, I never told anyone about this. I didn't want to stand out. WeFest is the biggest country music festival in America. Do you feel like you stand out here? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Faustin, Minnesota, a town of 1,500 people. As you may know from my 2009 banger, Straight Out of Faustin, still slaps. In a small community, I didn't want to be different. I worried I'd be mocked and shunned, so I kept my gender incongruence bottled up. I thought I could choose not to have it, but some aspects of identity are not choices. Peter LaBarbera is the executive director of the Illinois Family Institute, an organization that promotes traditional values. When did you choose to be a heterosexual? I didn't choose. During childhood, I expressed my identity in private. Whenever I was home alone, I ran to my mom's closet, took a mental picture of where everything was, dressed up in her clothes, then carefully put them back. And by the way, mom, I'm putting you on blast. Not enough dresses? Step up your fashion game. Can I show you one of my designs? Okay, I'm a little scared, but okay. <laughs> oh, I love it. I wasn't prepared for that. You look like a big angry baby. But expressing myself in private wasn't enough. See, repressing gender identity issues does not make them go away. Instead, they snowball. I needed to express myself in public. Halloween provided an excuse, but I didn't take it. I worried some would read too much into my costume. Are you dressed as your true self? I would not say that, no. My true self is a system administrator for an internet company. During senior year, I realized I'm going to college soon. So, screw it. I'm doing it. And I'm not waiting until October 31st. During homecoming week, we usually have dress-up days. On spirit day, I'll dress as a cheerleader. Although it's a bit suspicious, since I'm not a sports fan. <laughs> I actually don't like the bears. I'm just trying to be ironic. <laughs> but that year the school didn't announce Spirit Day. I was crushed. Then I got an idea. <laughs> I created a fake email address and wrote the principal. I said, hey, Spirit Day's fun. Can we do Spirit Day again this year? The next morning he announced Spirit Day. See, I'm such a super genius. I can manipulate anyone to do my bidding. I'd love to get a Swedish massage. <laughs> yeah, go get one. <laughs> yeah, go get one, exactly. Am I going to do this for long? Or? Oh, so long. So long. All right. I did it. I borrowed a cheerleading uniform and spent the day dressed up, pretending like it was a joke. It wasn't. I was expressing my identity. It was a huge relief. It felt like I was drowning and finally came up for air. But it didn't last. Someone made a nasty comment. That's all it took. I jumped right back in the water. Eric Lambert, Joe, 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 twice. Jumping, jumping twice because his camera guy didn't show up. Here we go. Three, two, two one. Joe goes again.
Years later, I came up for air. During my third year at the University of Chicago, I dressed as a woman for a costume party. I went all out. Shaved legs, dress, heels, wig, purse, makeup. Some people said, oh, it seems like you're enjoying this too much. <laughs> I didn't care. I was so happy I could dance. From that point on, my life revolved around Halloween. It was the one day I could be myself. So I made it special. I went as a prom queen every year. I bought ball gowns, heels, breast forms, makeup, purses, wigs, sparing no expense. And I schemed to go out as many nights as possible with different people so no one would ask probing questions. How many beers did you have today? Does weed count as a beer? Weed does not count as a beer. So where was your friend's house at? Where were you coming from? Yonder. Yonder. Also, I used my TV show as an excuse. Brag. Not really. I used to work for Current TV, Al Gore's interactive cable network for young adults. Not a joke. Just look at this super flattering photo. In 2005, two video platforms launched, YouTube and Current TV. I bet everything on Current TV. Nailed it. In an episode of Joe Getz, I got a female makeover. Oh my god, have you seen The Notebook? It changed my soul. But expressing my identity once or twice a year wasn't enough. After moving to Los Angeles, I obsessively looked for more excuses. I googled January costume events, February costume events, March costume events, etc. And I found a lot. LA is bursting with events. There's a convention for pretty much everything. I feel like I'm fitting right in here at CatCon. Everyone fits in at CatCon. <laughs> So, I lived a double life. One is Joe, and one is Lily. I went out secretly, alone, to theme parties, masquerade balls, adult proms, and took all of the substances to get as much happiness as possible, because I wasn't happy as Joe. Even when I had amazing experiences, I felt empty inside. Sometimes it was hard to hide my secret life, like when I was living with two dudes. One night, I came home from an event at 2 a.m. wearing a ball gown, heels, makeup, etc. My roommate was sleeping on the couch. I took off the heels and tiptoed to my bedroom thinking, don't wake up, don't wake up, because sometimes I wake people up. Hey, I had a nightmare. Can I get into bed with you guys? No. You guys are desecrating the American flag. No, we're not. We will bomb the shit out of you. I made it to my bedroom, took off the clothes, scrubbed off the makeup, went to sleep. The next day, I saw my roommate. He said, Hey, Joe, I saw a girl go into your bedroom late last night. Nice. That girl was me. I just smiled and nodded. Yup, got a 2 a.m. booty call. I'm a real pickup artist. Yeah, I'm staying in a hotel right now. I'm staying in a hotel right now. If you play your cards right, you might have to come visit. If you play your cards right, you might be able to come visit. <laughs> 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 but expressing my identity once a month wasn't enough. I started doing it every weekend without a theme as an excuse. I went to safe places, LGBTQ friendly bars and clubs, electronic dance parties with burners and other free spirits, crowds that would accept me with no prejudice. What kind of music do you do? I do country music. I make rap music. Do you? We should form a band and solve racism. <laughs> there you go. I was so happy to express myself and be accepted and make friends who only knew me as Lily. Sometimes I forgot I met them because I blacked out. Still, it was great. But it always ended. The next morning, my joy crumbled into ashes when I woke up as Joe. I felt miserable. Being Joe became intolerable. So, I went to war with myself. It was a daily battle. Suffering second task, I'm back, no one can match. Me on the microphone, your mother has a nasty snatch. I've been up in it. That is so big, yo! His brother's p has its own zip code! By day, I was Joe. 
At night, I overindulged in substances and came out as trans to people on Facebook and text. I spammed them with photos of Lily and spilled my heart out in long histrionic messages. And some of these people weren't even friends. They were acquaintances I hadn't spoken to in years. I was desperate for connection. If you sunburn and your skin peels, can I have some of it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Sure, just sell it on eBay. No, I'm making a girl out of it. Oh my goodness. The next day, I felt a wave of shame. I said, never again. Then, at night, I overindulged in substances and came out as trans to more people. This cycle went on, day after day, week after week, month after month, until finally I realized one day I might not wake up. Part of me wanted that. I would rather be nothing than continue to live as Joe. So, I went to a healthcare provider to seek therapy with a specialist in gender identity issues. Through the process, I decided to try living as Lily and never looked back. Now, I'm happy, healthy, obviously, living thirst trap, and I still indulge in some substances, but in moderation. This is, this is the good performance. Just ring my friend. Today, there's more awareness of transgender people, which is great, but we have a long way to go. I wish more people listened to trans people tell their stories. I wish more people learned the facts about trans issues. If you don't know anything about us, it's okay. We all have blind spots. For example, I don't know anything about Van Halen. Are you famous? You ever heard of Van Halen? I mostly listen to hip hop. Van Halen. You, uh, are you in the band? My name's Eddie Van Halen. What is no, it? Van Halen this way. Trans people have the medical condition gender dysphoria. Our gender identity does not match the biological sex assigned at birth, which can cause pain and distress. The goal of treatment is to help patients live in accord with their gender identity and alleviate pain and distress. The medically necessary treatment may include hormone therapy and surgery, or it may not. That's between patients and their doctors. It's nobody else's business. Without treatment, patients are at risk for depression, anxiety, and suicide. If you are suffering from these issues, seek help. You are not alone, even though sometimes you feel alone. Last month, I filmed three different orgies, and one of them, there were 16 people. Wow. Mostly when I go to orgies, it's just one person. <laughs> it's just me and a bunch of wigs. <laughs> My sources are partisan hacks and anonymous trolls on toxic forums. Just kidding. My sources are the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, and the World Health Organization. Congratulations! Now you know a little about trans people. And I still don't know anything about Van Halen. Give her a song called Jump. Like crisscross, jump, jump. The Mac Daddy will make you jump, jump. The Daddy Mac will make you. Will you bitch slap this guy? So, why does transphobia persist? One, a lack of empathy. As Laverne Cox's documentary Disclosure shows, trans representation in the media has been trash. In movies, TV shows, and books, we're constantly portrayed as jokes, tricksters, serial killers, people to fear, mock, and find disgusting. This is a sheep's head. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. No, I'm judging this by its cover. <laughs> the tongue is the best part, I don't know. It is. Also, people spread pernicious myths. Uh, transgender people are mentally ill. False, not classified as a mental disorder. Uh, letting transgender people use bathrooms matching their gender identity endangers cisgender people. False, there's no evidence to support that. It's baseless fear-mongering. The gay agenda was everywhere. And there was no escape. Uh, 
trans-inclusive healthcare is expensive. All trans people medically transition. Gender identity is linked to sexual orientation. False, false, false. I could go on and on. Today, we can access all of this information, including which sources are reliable and which are not, yet people still deny facts. Like how Europe denies football is soccer. Soccer? What's soccer? I don't know if that's football. I don't know what you're saying is soccer. You kick your ball with your foot, right? Yeah, but soccer makes more sense. How does it make sense? You're socking the ball around. <laughs> And it's not just trans issues. People deny facts on all issues. Some people believe the world is flat. Some people believe vaccines are harmful. Some people believe climate change isn't real. Some people believe baseless conspiracy theories. I know I'm jumping around topics right now. I do that. I love how we're jumping from like one subject. Talking about politics and then we're talking about pigeons and yeah. Probably. Really? Are they any different? Mm -hmm. So deep. <laughs> you got the left wing and the right wing. <laughs> we often laugh at people who deny reality. My favorite example is on the show, I Think You Should Leave. There's a sketch at a job interview. It goes well. Then Tim Robinson's character gets up to go and pulls the door. It doesn't open. The employer says, huh, looks like you push. A dumb mistake. We all look foolish sometimes. First. You can choose your favorite color store. What color do you want? <laughs> but Tim's character says, no, the door actually goes both ways. Then he pulls it, slowly forcing it open. Hinges snap, bolts fly, a vein pops out, drool dribbles, bang. The door is open and broken. He thinks this is victory. It's not. It's defeat. He's not getting hired. Just like I never get hired as a glamour photographer. For this, I want you to be physically attractive. You're waiting for a bus, and the bus is seduction. You are a hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> I'm not sure if that one works. <laughs> the sketch is about a person that denies reality, doubles down, and acts like an idiot. I laughed. Then I realized I can empathize. The truth is, my whole life I had major gender dysphoria. But I stubbornly insisted I didn't. Like how Europe stubbornly insists on calling soccer football. Break it down. Football. So you kick the ball with your foot. Yeah. So but you, you want to gain a yard, and a yard is three feet. <laughs> soccer, you're just socking it to and fro. <laughs> I pulled the push door. I denied reality and doubled down, insisting I'm Joe. Making all these videos. Joe goes, Joe gets, Joe this, Joe that. And this includes appearing as Joe on the reality show Beauty and the Geek, saying I can't get a date because I'm shy. After watching my videos, do I seem shy? You got these whores exposing body parts. Woo! Wow. No wonder there's so many words. <laughs> And like Tim's character, I acted like an idiot. When people liked me, I pushed them away. And when people didn't like me, I tried to pull them closer, knowing I'd be rejected. Secretly, I wanted to be alone so no one would discover my gender dysphoria. A cycle of self-sabotage. I became filled with depression, anxiety, and anger. Lisa, I love you. I hate you. Lisa, I love you. I hate you so much. Lisa, I love you. I tried to escape by filling my life with work, spending all my free time making videos. I created exhausting, unhealthy schedules, even when traveling to other countries. I worked from the moment the plane landed to the moment the next plane took off. And on the plane, writing, editing, researching, no time to chill. I had no chill. I love cupcakes. I really, really, really love cupcakes. Do you also love getting diabetes? No, I don't know what that is. When I watch old videos, I see that negativity, that self-hate, that bitterness, and it sucks. Because cut to now, everything is so much better. My job, health, writing, social life, because I'm living my truth. By the way, last year I changed my name to Lily Joe Hansen. I would have picked Scarlett Joe Hansen, but some bitch took it. I got what I want. I'm expressing my identity 24-7. It's enough. But it comes with a price. Regret. Is this a Comic-Con exclusive? Yeah. Hi, Loren. How much did you spend on this stuff? A little over 800 bucks. Wow. <laughs> 
We'll see him later at RegretCon. Uh, the vast majority of trans people regret transitioning. False. The opposite is true. Go away, transphobe guy. Nobody wanted a call back from you. I'm talking about the regret of not transitioning sooner. I wasted years not being my best self. I wish I made healthier choices. Wait, is there gluten? Is this have gluten? Gluten free, of course. Oh, good. Last year, I started writing for Gooder, a sunglass brand with a drunk kleptomaniac pansexual flamingo named Carl as a mascot. It's a serious job and took the Enneagram test. The Enneagram is a personality typing system that describes patterns in how we interpret the world, our strengths, limitations, and reactions to stress. You know, when we're in a hole. We're gonna show you what it's all about to preg check. And uh, these gloves are shoulder length. Oh my God. Oh, it's warm. <laughs> oh. Ugh. Did you feel anything else when you're in there? Regret. The model says we all belong to one of nine personality types. The idea is not to put you in a box, but to give you the tools to get out of the box. For example, I'm type 7, the enthusiast, the busy, curious, variety seeker. Having made travel shows for a decade, that tracks. Do you wear a mini kilt when you want to feel sexy? Oh, oh gosh, no. My basic desire is to be satisfied and content. My basic fear is to be deprived and trapped in pain. On the upside, I'm spontaneous and versatile. On the downside, I can be impulsive and restless, seeking happiness somewhere else instead of the present moment. When I read my results, it rattled me. So I went on to read the book. As you know, I love books. <laughs> we can put it back together. We can put it back together. In The Wisdom of the Enneagram, Don Riso describes a vision he had at a spiritual retreat. And yes, this is getting hippy dippy. Break out your healing crystals. Don saw everyone's essence is made of light, but a black tar-like crust has formed over it, obscuring it. The crust forms when we can't control our personalities, when we listen to our ego's loud voice. Could we do a reading in wrestler voices? Sure. She's the worst for all this! Oh, a thousand, a thousand times! And then, of so gentle a condition! Our egos seek immediate comfort. In that sketch, Tim's character could have admitted he was wrong. Embarrassing for a moment, but he shows honesty and growth and probably gets the job. Instead, he denies his mistake, getting short-term comfort and long-term pain. He's not getting hired. Just like how I'll never get hired as U.S. Ambassador. Do you have wooden shoes? Um, no, I don't have wooden shoes. I use wooden condoms. Ah, and is it nice? Guaranteed to make you scream. It's uncomfortable to face some truths. That you made a mistake, or you're misinformed, or you're struggling and need help. But that discomfort passes. When I came out as Lily, it wasn't easy. I've been harassed. I've lost some people. But that's nothing compared to what I've gained. The positives dwarf the negatives. When you're being authentic, your essence shines and people want to be around you. Like how I want to be around members of the Wu-Tang Clan. I'm a big fan. Thank you. I appreciate that. Do you want to see my Wu-Tang tattoo? We got it. Where's it at? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. They're gonna die with that. But it's an ongoing struggle. Even in this video, I'm still costuming, plugging in old clips of Joe. It's a crutch. When I was writing, all these negative thoughts popped up like bees. Bzz, what if people don't like you? Bzz, what if you fail? I said, yes, bees, that might happen. But here's the thing. I don't care if people don't like me, and I don't care if I fail. Then I hit a button. The murder hornets come in and decapitate the bees. That's right, the murder hornets are the heroes in this analogy. Hashtag Team Murder Hornets. The point is, I have the tools to keep that toxic costume crust from reforming. So, no more cutaways. My story is not Joe became Lily. My story is Lily stopped pretending to be Joe. To my subscribers, thank you for watching the videos, for supporting the crowdfunding campaigns, for coming to the meetups and hanging out. I treasure those memories. 
But Joe Goes is over. I don't know if I'll make similar videos again. Right now I'm passionate about writing. But I know this. On Halloween 2019, some friends invited me to a costume party. I forgot it was Halloween. I had no costume prepared. Traffic was insane and I felt like staying in to read, watch shows, play video games. I'm still a huge nerd. I said, no thanks. I'm staying in tonight. Let's hang next weekend. They said, okay, cool. Hung up. Then I realized this is the first Halloween I'm not burning with anxiety because I'm Lily every day. Halloween is no longer the one day a year I can be myself. It's just a day to put on a costume. And I've had enough of that to last a lifetime. Thanks for watching.